Thank you very much, Matt. The State Department has recently issued new elevated travel advisories for a handful of countries. Uh, they include popular vacation destinations like Jamaica and the Bahamas. But does that mean you should not book trips to these places? Joining us to offer some perspective is Natalie Compton, a staff writer for The Washington Post reporting on travel. She's been to every continent and recently has been to the Bahamas. She joins us by Zoom. Natalie, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So I, I'm sure you heard the intro there. There are different levels of travel advisories or warnings from the State Department. So as it relates to the Bahamas and, and even Jamaica, just try to put that in perspective, if you will. Sure, this is nothing to cancel your vacation over or to feel wary about booking trips to these Caribbean destinations. If you look at similar levels around the world, we're talking level two is Germany, Antarctica. Hmm. These are places that you're not necessarily shaking in your boots to go to. But the State Department did issue these warnings due to an increase in murders. And also, we know there was a, a fatal boat collapse last year. So it's right. nothing to say, don't keep your wits about you when you go, but it's not anything to be really worried about. And, I, you know, where there, there's been stories of people that they do a swimming with sharks excursion. There have been some mishaps there that that can happen. That's part of the warnings there. But in particular, they say that uh, no tourists have been targeted in the Bahamas. I'm not sure about the situation in Jamaica, but it really lends to the fact that you really need to know where you're going at all times, right? It's just like traveling anywhere. You want to be cautious when you're walking anywhere at night or, for example, the State Department said, be wary about opening your door to strangers. That's true if you are at home in your own neighborhood or traveling in the Bahamas. So really just being cautious. You can also sign up for State Department warning alerts if anything truly catastrophic happens while you're on vacation. So that's a helpful tip from them as well. All right, for, th for folks who don't know the different uh, elevated levels that they'll send out the State Department, uh, that we're looking at them on the screen from level one to level four. You know, obviously there's some there that you really do not want to travel to, some areas I think that go without saying, but as you, when you talk about the levels there, what do you want people to take away from that? Don't go to a level four. That's usually some place that's experiencing war or a major conflict, even going to a place that is level three or level two. That doesn't mean you don't go there ever. It's just that you wanna be more cautious when you travel, always making sure you have cell service, getting that international phone plan when you travel mm -hmm. so you can always be in contact with your family at home. But there are places that are beloved by travelers in all of those categories and even places in level four, we still see travelers going there. So yeah. this is just your constant reminder to be safe no matter where you go. Yeah, because things can happen anywhere. That is Natalie Compton. She's a staff writer for The Washington Post reporting on travel. Thank you very much. We'd love to have you back sometime. Safe travels. All right. So how do these travel advisors now play into planning for vacations? Today's actually, you know, an important day, right? Yeah, it's the National Plan for Vacation Day. All right. So That's kind of nice. One of your it, favorite holidays. It is indeed. All right. So Alexa Murdoch is joining us now with some tips on how to travel and going off that. You know, it's so interesting because especially in the news, it all alerted us yesterday because we saw the Bahamas thing go out being a level two. Then if you dig a little bit further on the website, you'll see other places like Jamaica at an even higher level like level three. But you were telling me not to panic if you have plans to go there. Just kind of give us some tips on if you do see this as a traveler going to somewhere, what can you do? How do you interpret those? Yeah, just exercise your normal sense of caution. Obviously, if it's a level two, it's not as extreme as a level four. So if it's level two, just be more mindful. Use those safety features built into your hotels, the locks on your doors, the safety deposit box. Anytime you leave the room, just make sure you have your key. You have a spare key downstairs if you need to, but don't open the door. If you haven't ordered room service, if you haven't ordered new towels, there's somebody random outside, just don't open the door. Obviously, if you do a vacation rental on some of these, that's a more targeted area. So if it's a level two, level three, I would recommend more staying like on a property where you have a little bit more security system that isn't necessarily a private security on, on a hotel or resort, not an Airbnb situation yes. for that reason. Okay, yeah. uh, in terms of the Bahamas, we know a lot of people make spring break plans to maybe go there. Where would you advise them to go, not to go? Uh, I know it's similar to that, but if they don't know the cities and the towns there. Right, so look at what the travel advisory says. A lot of the times it'll specifically list some locations that are more prone to areas. With the Bahamas, it's more gang violence at this time. So. There's a specific street where it says you should avoid. Obviously, if you're like my husband who likes to rent a moped and just tour the island, probably not the best time to be doing that, to just be freelancing on your own. Definitely make sure you pick an excursion or activity that is backed by somebody else. If you're on a cruise line, they specifically partner with specific 
renters of, mm -hmm. you know, like water equipment, snorkeling adventures, those are going to be safer in the sense that they are getting backed by somebody else and not just like a random person you pick up off the cruise terminal right. when you get off. So <laughs> be more wary of people just trying to sell you things as you are exiting the ship, exiting your hotel, kind of, you know, have your guard up a little bit and think twice about doing and stuff. And you were saying some things are regulated, but watercrafts aren't? Right, and the Bahamas watercrafts are not regulated like the United States. So they don't have to have X amount of, you know, safety devices on the boat. They don't have to have maintenance required to the boat. There's like a lot of differences in the United States between islands like this. So those excursions or outings that are backed by some other company or have a ton of reviews online that are good and don't have any problems, obviously accidents happen and situations where you don't have enough watercraft safety devices are important, but it's better if you have some knowledge. Always a good idea to travel insurance as well that has yes. the coverage for to, if yes. you have to get medevac to the U.S., I would think. Real quickly though, Cancun's another popular place. People hear us about travel yeah. advisors to Mexico. Yes. Give them pers perspective now if you go to the Yucatan Peninsula as opposed to a better part of the country. Right. I think, I mean, if you go to an all-inclusive, it's a little better, especially in Mexico, than just going off island is what I usually say. Um, but in the United States, you, you're, you know, at home, you have more safety structures. If you go abroad, make sure you sign up for like STEM, which is the safety travel emergency enrollment, and they'll tell you different safety alerts. That way, if you do have a problem, you can go to the U.S. Embassy and your information is already logged in. Um, and that way, if you do lose your passport, take a photocopy with you. You can take the photocopy in with you to the embassy and you can, you know, prove that you're a U.S. citizen that way and they can help you get a new passport to get home. It doesn't count if it's a photocopy to travel. You have to have the actual passport, but it's just another safety feature that you can go back and forth with. Okay, so make use of the U.S. Embassy when traveling yes. international. Yeah. That is awesome. Great information. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. You're welcome. Hope that helps some folks. Mm -hmm. Let's go plan our vacations, Sheldon. Yes.